and welcome to a very special episode of Seconds Out. This week, no studio, no guests, just 100% action. And as ever, joining me in the commentary box was Kevin Murray. Started coming down now, Jack. He's getting his, um, his distance and he's using his jab. Yeah, he's just, he's just getting that range of that jab now. He's not mixing it too much. He's picking up for the jabs. He's having a bit of a breather with this round, I think. He's just getting that jab going. Nicking the shots, nicking the points. Tucking up, taking the body shots off Billy. He's going for the attack now. It's where he gets excited and starts throwing a lot of shots. Yeah. Just, just getting a bit excited here, getting combinations off. Good right hand there. It's where he should actually get standing count because he's not firing nothing back, Billy. The referee's just stepping in the count. Uh, he's tucking up now, he's breaking up now, referee. Well, that volume of punches there that Jack threw, dare I say, you're looking at a young Joe Kalzaki perhaps? Yeah, that's right, it's um, very fast combinations. He's just got to settle down on his punches a bit more and start letting a bit of power into his right hands. You know, get his double jab going off in right hands, but then fast flooders get the points, so. And there's the man when he gets into the bigger fights, when he's fighting for his titles. He just, oh, this is his pass what he's going to do when he gets to the, the higher stages. Because these are learning fights for him. That's why I say he's got to get the rounds out. It's no good to try to stop Billy. You won't stop Billy anyway, you know, unless you've got the really good power. But if he just keeps it like it is now and looking good, he's getting the experience, and that's what he needs. He needs the rounds. He's doing all right here. What's it like as, as a coach, Joe? You give your young man his, his game plan and then you go in there and watch him and he, and he doesn't follow it. How frustrating is that for you? Uh, when, you when they don't uh, follow your instructions, you just tell them straight. Do what I've been practicing in the gym. And, and then they've got to get up off the stool, then go and do what you've told them to do. You know, and you just keep warning them and shouting them and you know, try and big them, them up a bit. But to stick to the plan that you've worked on, you should actually win the fight. You could, most trainers would watch takes of the, the opponents work out um, tactics what they're going to use in the fight and then hope it pays off everyone knows Billy Smith who's on telly nearly every, every other week you know you know what type of fight it is so you know what to do just keep the distance with him don't try and stop him because he won't stop him he's winning it comes with Jack he's doing really good here he's got the shots go yeah, he's getting mixed up here this is where he gets caught himself because he's mixing it with the smaller opponent he should be actually standing off and boxing him and he goes. He's got to stand off and get his jab going. Just he's winning the fight, so he's no good to do. Try to stop him last round. Got to get his jabs going in right hands. He's just stand there taking him. That's good right hand there. One two right hand. Yeah, he's getting stuck in. He's just makes it a bit too much last round. Should have kept it distance. He's winning the fight quite comfortably. So what he's got to do is just box him, move around, box him around, let him just come to. Him. He's getting a bit tired now because he's putting too much work into the last round. Good right hand there. Good body puncher for the tall lad, isn't it? Thirty wins, six stoppages. Thomas McDonough, former undefeated WBU Intercontinental Light Middleweight Champion, been around a long time, Joe, but still only 27. And we believe a big fight coming up for him in the next couple of weeks. But Thomas will tell us all about that a little bit later on. But uh, Yasino Machi, not really know a great deal about him. I know he fought Brett Flournoy and Denton Vassell. Goes by the nickname of uh, the Showman. Eight fights, four wins, four defeats. But when you've been out of the ring for ten months like Thomas has, I don't think you need someone like Yassine no match in front of you, do you? No, I'm just going to spoil it. He needs to put someone with a bit of class and a bit more, uh, bit more of a record. Because at the level he's fighting it for his next fight, he's going to have to step up the game. As you can see here, now he's just, you know, he's a good, good little fighter, really. He's strong and he's fit. He's having a good go. He's awkward, he's slipping there. Making it a bit of an ugly fight, really. Thomas just got his combinations off and let the right hands go. He is south on, he's just got to let him go and he'll catch him. But no one's doing much work here. 
an ugly fight perhaps the uh, the sellout crowd at the uh, fantastic muni here in Colne maybe they deserved a bit better what did you make of the atmosphere it's not not really a fighting town but it's twice now Manchester fight night has been to the place looks a bit like uh, old Bethel Green doesn't it yes it does with the balcony right around it it's a great great venue uh, I think they've got a top venue there now for uh, these Burnley boxers like you know the Sean Arsfalls and the Super Mad Fadgens I think it's uh, a top venue for you know, to sell out like this every time they're on the winner it's a cracking venue very good crowd as well like I say to go come to see um, young Super Mad Fadgens really. he sells for tickets well We don't have access to uh, the referee's scorecards. It's something we're looking at doing in future shows so we can update the viewers as the fight's going on. But how would you have scored this up to now? I think it's just one of them close fight. A couple of rounds, even because they're doing nothing. Uh, maybe Thomas has got with a few good um, left hooks and right hands, but nothing, at, nothing else looks like uh, it's happening. It just seems to be both throwing shots and falling over each other and holding each other. So there's no quality shots for the referee to um, actually score because very untidy Thomas will probably get it it's on ground as well no it's on ground so he might just get the decision because of that but he's not landing no quality shots he's very scrappy he's falling all over the place now it's like a more of a wrestling match rather than a boxing match he should be punching more but the kid is awkward and you know it's a bad match for the middle Just got it. He's just got it, Thomas. Very scrappy fight, but he's won it. Looking forward to seeing Carl Place here. I've been uh, impressed with him for his first two fights. Looks very strong, looks made for this professional game. Yeah, definitely. There's uh, a lot of people talking about him at the moment, and he, he won't do himself any harm today with a nice win. Well, it's the first time we've seen him on this show now, and he looks at he, you know, he, I've heard a lot of good things about him. He's a very good amateur. He's fighting Johnny, Johnny Greaves, he's not, not got the greatest record, but don't be fooled by that. I've seen him box a couple of other Manchester lads, Anthony Carolla and, uh, and Ricky Goddins, and, uh, and he's, he's very awkward and very hard to hit. Carl's working really well here at start off. Yeah, lively start, straight into him, letting him know that he's in his own backyard. Yeah, he definitely looks like more of a pro than an amateur, which is good after only two fights. He's, he's working well down to the body, looks really strong, boxing really well. Needs to work on them interviews, might have to get him on uh, seconds out. <laughs> All part of the learning curve for him. I like the way uh, Carl just has his chin tucked down and always looks protected when he's throwing these shots. He's working really well here now. Keeping him against the ropes, they're not letting him out of that corner. Yeah, it's been fought at a really top pace, and it was a late notice fight. You've got to hand it to these guys who are coming at late notice and putting a performance like this. There'd be no boxing without these kind of guys. Carl's doing all the right things here today. I'd heard a lot about him before the fight, and this is the first chance I'd really got to watch him, and, and I am really, really excited by him. Love the way he mixes it up. Good work again, upstairs, downstairs, a little, little right uppercut there, and then just covers up nicely as well, chin tucked down, just really well schooled. Yeah, sometimes it can be awkward when someone's got a, a bad record like Greaves, but like you said, he can, he can drag fighters right to the distance, and, and young Carl coming in for his, uh, his third fight could have slipped up today. Yeah, Carl could have looked at that record and got a little bit carried away with his two wins so far, especially having a sensational knockout in his last fight, but he's coming here and he's just done everything really professional and that's, that's another thing that I like about him today. Not taking any chances, he's coming, he's worked at a really high rate. I'm sure the crowd here today will be really impressed and we're looking at seeing Carl again.
See Johnny now just, just looking marked up around his face there. Still coming forward, still throwing a few shots of his own. He's being told there by his corner there to just launch him right up and cuts as Johnny's coming in. That's a good shot. Lovely classy little shot there. Waited for Johnny to come forward and threw a right hand over the top. That was a brilliant shot. Just wants to see this round out now, Johnny Greasy. He won't want to get stopped. Car place looks happy now to just see the round out and win this comfortably on points. Like you said, some great body shots. Body shots are what really impressed me there, and I think this is just obviously another comfortable, comfortable win for Car Place and, and well deserved and somebody I'm looking forward to seeing again. Yeah, definitely, I like the look of him. Well done, mate. We've got Chris Johnson against Peter Dunn. As you've been saying there, Chris lost his pro debut. But he's come back well, he's had a few good wins and um, he's learning all the time. It would be remiss of me not to begin by saying thank you very much for agreeing to join us, um, Jamie. I don't believe it's an ambition of yours to commentate on television. Well, yeah, you know, you've always got to think when you're hang up the gloves what you're going to do. And, um, you know, You'll have to forgive me if I'm a bit raw, but hopefully as time goes on, we'll get it right. Well, I'm not going to be the one brave enough to tell you, don't worry about that. Tell me a little bit about Peter Dunn, one of the, one of the better journeymen within, the, within our shores. Yeah, I mean, you know, the boxing needs people like this, and even though he's not one minute, he always gives a decent fight, and uh, only the best of them get him out of there. You know, he's, uh, he's not been stopped in two years, and if Chris can stop him then it'd be a really good performance we well, mentioned before Chris lost his debut which you know it can happen to anyone you know you get caught cold it's like Steve Wood said as they say in boxing that's boxing which was a, a really good thing to say that Stephen but we'll, we'll forgive him for that one as long as he does a good job with our lads a few rounds into your television debut on channel and Jamie how do you feel? Yeah, I feel okay, you know, I'm just uh, glad that Chris is making it easier for me, you know, he's, uh, he's boxing well and, you know, I don't have to be too, too critical, you know, he's, uh, he's doing a good job. It's a lovely right up there, I'm putting down. Throw, throws that shot nice, Chris, throws it well. He's done well there, uh, because Peter Dunn's a, a difficult guy to, uh, to hurt, you know, so he's done well to drop in there. It shows that he's got a bit of a, um, bit of a dig. And, um, you know, maybe if he, if he jumped on him now, he'd catch him with, with another, you know, another couple of clean ones. He'd be able to get him out of there, first guy to do it in two years. But um, if he can do that, it'd be be a great achievement but I don't know I think Peter Dunn might be a bit, a bit long in the tooth for that Dunn's just, just looking for the final bell now. He's, um, so he's not doing much, he's just stood there. He knows, he knows the bell's coming soon. He's just making sure that he gets to the end and he can pick his paycheck up and, and try and get another one next week. This, that, it's, a, it's a good performance by Chris, you know. He stayed nice and composed, didn't let, didn't let Peter Dunn ruffle him. Johnny trains down at our gym. He's looking good so far.
strange position for Johnny Kay. He's big reputation. He's had many fights, has he? Tell us a little bit about him. It, John's had, you know, a th he's had three fights now. He's unbeaten. Well, he's 24 years old. And he's a decent amateur. I think people are expecting big things of him. So hopefully, um, Steve was looking after him and do, he'll do a good job with him. Obviously, John, John's got to do the other part then in the ring and, and, and do the business. He's looking nice and composed here. He's got nice, nice quick hands. He's throwing that left hook nice down to the body. Is that the Jolly Boy show, Mike? Not this year. I had to be uh, had to be elsewhere. Let's leave it at that, shall we? And it was I, I was I was otherwise occupied. But anyone anyone who's ever been to the Jolly, Jolly Boys know that it's a, it's a cracking deal. What Steve Wood puts on at Christmas. And the good thing about it is, even though we're not paid by Steve Wood, you do get value for your money with the boxing, don't you? Of course you do. Yeah, you know. Um, he always puts on, you know, good competitive fights. And uh, it's not just about the boxing, you know, it's um, everyone gets together for, for Christmas, you know, it's, there's a meal and, and uh, comedian and stuff. And, and um, Jen Summons entertainment afterwards as well, which is um, always a bonus. Moving swiftly on, Johnny Kay's already looks a cut above his opponent, doesn't he? I, I reckon this one's a bit last distance, Jay. There's a lovely body shots again. He's maybe loading up just a little too much there, Johnny. If, if you just let him flow, you know, if you can punch, you can punch. You don't have to, to put too much behind him. You're better off not showing, showing your opponent and coming. You're better off disguising him a little bit. But he's getting there with it. But maybe, maybe just a, li a little bit over eager. The way the way he just slipped that slip that one into the body, there. See, you don't have to load, load it up. He's just if he just lets him flow, the, sh the shots are landing, and the ones that you don't see coming in, the ones that hurt. See that there, lovely body shots. He's putting them together great now. Oh, they're, yeah, the referee stopped it. There was nothing coming back, and John was landing the clean shots there. And it, it, probably the referee's done done Craig a favour there. He wasn't landing. The shots, what he did, what, what he was throwing back was missing. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good win for John. That you know, he's coming along nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he, he is an opponent, uh, Dean Walker. You know, he'll come and have a go, and I think that's what he'll do tonight with Martin Murray. I don't think he's going to get much out of the job, but, uh, you know, I don't think he's going to just roll over. Nice guard, obviously well-conditioned young man. Dean yeah, Walker as well. yeah. He actually yeah. travelled to uh, Hungary to fight uh, Joseph Nagy once in 2005 for the RBF. Yeah, the title. yeah. So he has been around, he knows his way around the ring, doesn't he? Yeah, of course he does, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, talking about condition, look at Martin Murray again. I mean, he's in fantastic shape, isn't he? The same as all Oliver's lads are, you know, all of Oliver, Oliver Addison's lads are all in great shape when they fight. You know, it looks like he's really come to have a go, doesn't he, Dean Walker, tonight? Yeah. Only one fear of his previous 19 fights. Not often stopped, as we keep saying. Good chin on him. So, yeah. sit back and enjoy this one. Yeah, of course. Are you finding the commentating experience better? It's, it's not bad. It's very very good at the minute. Uh, and, you know, I'd just like to mention that I'll accept the 500 quid instead of the £1,000 like Mosey <laughs> always asks for. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
speaking of Mosey, obviously, uh, get well soon, Olivia. Yeah, of course, yeah. Get well soon, Olivia. Through all the lads, you know. Yeah, he's really working away now, Martin, isn't he? He's, uh, he's trying to look for the stoppage, you think, aren't he? He probably thinks it's time to get, get Dean out of there. Yeah, yeah. One stoppage from his first two fights, he's bound to get a few more. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. You know, he's, a strong, he's a strong kid, isn't he? What do you think it was about that Macklin fight that's changed his attitude? You don't win nine on the bounce if you're not, if you're not good. Well, we, we, we some some kids, you know, they get they get a defeat and it and it. Some some of them just can't really recover from it, you, you know. Will you enjoy working with Matt? Will you miss him? Now he's yeah, yeah. I mean, Matt, Matt's a lovely lad, isn't he? You know, he's one of the nice guys in boxing, Matt Macklin. Um, yeah, I mean, all you can do is wish him the best with his new career, you know, uh, with his new training and stuff like that. You think he'll stay at super middle? With Martin? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I suppose it depends, you know, he can box at super middle now, but if, you know, if, if he gets a title shot at middle weight, I'm not sure he'll be able to make it. Huh? It's a tired Dean Walker now, isn't it? Yeah, he's getting tired now, he's getting a little bit fed up, isn't he? He's, uh, he knows he's fighting an uphill battle now. But like all these fighters, they're all brave lads, aren't they? So he's got to get off the steel and go and have some more, hasn't he? Couple of months, a couple of weeks. I was going to headline at uh, Everton Park Sports yeah, Centre. I mean, That'll be some homecoming yeah, for him. That's great. Isn't it? I mean, that's what Steve's doing this year, isn't he? He's getting all these lads to fight all in the local towns. That's it for this week. Join us again next week. We'll be back to normal with guest John Murray, who'll hopefully still be unbeaten, and also bronze medal winner from the Olympic Games 2008. That's Tony Jeffries. Make sure you join us. Rock, 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 rock,